Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my another video. This is going to be a third video for a series of pulling the applications using the Spring Boot on the back end and the uh, Angular on the front end part. So, so far, what we did on the last video is we created a new Spring project and we added our dependencies. And of course, we can view our dependencies on pom.xml file. This is all our dependencies which we need, need for this project JPA, uh, web. Uh, dev tools, uh, MySQL connector, Lambwalk, or the starter test. I think we don't even need starter test to use it, but this is the dependencies what we added, and this is the what we we have in our file called the uh, talks management applications, and this is the main file that is running. And currently, I'm running here on localhost port 8080, which is uh, also defined here in the bottom. And of course, it's coming with the uh, Tomcat server, okay? So now, if I run it, now it's running here, and that's all we have it. And in this video, we're gonna start diving on the code, and we're gonna create our tables, uh, okay? Using the uh, Hibernet, uh, because JPA has a Hibernet, uh, JPA is sitting on the top of Hibernet, so we can use uh, the Hibernet ORM technologies, so we don't have to worry about to create a tables here in SQL. Uh, tables instead of that what is it SQL tables here it is instead of that we will uh, create on our model here and it this will do our ORM it this will map our all our property with the column on the tables okay that's what we're gonna do on this video and let's see how so far how far we can get up to so now to do that let me create a new class and now this class is going to be our Talks okay, and I will put inside the packages called uh, modal okay. So this is the talks here which we created, and we will use a couple of the uh, JPA annotations here. The first thing is entity. So basically, this is called an entity, and now this entity will allow me to create this uh, the class as a tables on our SQL on our SQL tables right here okay yeah i haven't saved it and i need to do little configurations but this is the first step so now we'll tell them this is an entity now we will create a class here so the class of, for the property is the first thing is an id so this is going to be my id second let me create a title T -I -T -L -E, title and also let me create another field called type and let me create another field called date and this is going to be due date uh, due date and let me create the last one called the PRAVAT private string description okay okay so this is the field what is going to be for my talks table I need to import a date from the util I will import from the util class and I will also I could also say that what is this ID is going to be on my tables so I can say that this is a unique ID so I will just say that okay this make this as a primary key with the ID and let me do as a generated value as a auto increment so I don't have to increment every time right and this will do a auto increment okay auto increment okay and we could also give a more column we can also tell that what is the column will be on on the table so we can say that the column name is uh, id okay and that's it and we could also add another entrance like not null stuff like that you guys can search about it on jpa uh, but for now we're just adding that all okay so once we have our entity defined so if i go to my tables and if i refresh it it's not going to create me any tables at this time we have to literally tell the spring that okay we have an entity there it's created inside that com the sam that model packages just scan it we need to tell that okay is it there you need to scan it okay so where is it we need to specify it's come inside the sam okay so now it's going to run and it's going to scan it okay so once it's scan if i check it here and if i refresh it's not gonna create at all nothing it just scan it it found it but it doesn't do anything so we need to literally tell on properties class here what it need to do 
okay do we need to create or drop or you just need to update whenever you create whenever you uh, run this app again for again right so we need to tell spring that okay spring that jpa that hibernate ddl auto we can say that okay create here is a create we can say create it every time when the application run just create it or every time when application run then create and destroy it or do nothing right or, or update whenever it's created and just update and validate makes no changes yeah i don't think the value will do anything so i'm not exactly sure about what the value is i haven't used it i just use a create and create and up create and drop all the time so just use a create okay so once i use a create so now if i go to my tables where is my tables here database called the talks management if i refresh now it's create me a two tables one is called hibernate sequence and another called talks so if i go in talks then i can see the properties here id description due date uh, title and the type everything right so if i go in my here this is the exact thing what i see right this is the exact the property which i define it here and which we can see on my tables which is here so I don't have to worry about creating a field, anything here at all. I just need to create in my model and it will automatically create my tables on my uh, database called talks management. Okay. So once I create this, so now let me get back here and let me create a repository. Okay. Let me create the, another class and this class is not class sorry i need to create an interface because let me create an inter interface interface called repo repo and this is going to be tox repo c story okay and i'll give another package called sam the repo c to race okay tox repository so basically what the talks repository will give you is you can extend this uh, uh, the client interface uh, with the uh, JPA repository. So JPA repository will give you a lot of cl classes which you can use it. So uh, so whenever we create the JPA repository, we need to specify what is this uh, the JPA repository belongs to. So we say that, okay, it belongs to the talks which we created inside this uh, model and we will say that what is the primary key for that the type of the primary key we need to specify and we say that it's along that what we created okay so here we can specify the our custom uh, method as well and we could add our custom method or we don't need to create our custom method the jpa is already providing a lot of really good method what we can literally can use it or we could also create our own custom method if we like here or write a query or or we can also write a like native query sql query or or, or a jpa query if we like i'm going to use a sql query and jpa query later on okay to just to get the data for that the chart which i show in part one for the app what is going to be for now i'll just extend this so i just need to get some crowd operation on the task so next step is to create with the the services so for that i will create the the new class and this class is going to be a talk service okay so on talk service i will add a new package is called com.sam.services and i'll just use as a talk service i will just continue here and i will specify that okay this is going to be my service so on the service uh, now it's a time to use a lambok here i will use a couple of lambok here uh, I think I forgot to use a Lambok on my model as well. Uh, I don't need to use a Lambok. Lambok will just help you to just to create a getter setter or, or all the all the arguments stuff like that. If I use something called all argument constructor, then you can see here on the side that it will add you a constructor by itself. You don't need to type it here at all. It will add, add it for you. So if I use something called data, right? data then it's yep it's going to add all my getter setter everything here right i don't need to create anything like uh literally i don't need to type it or create it it's gonna add you here by easily okay so uh, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use a data and all the uh, all argument constructor 
and entity and i could also use on no argument constructor here uh, no argument constructor so it will add me a no argument constructor here as well right so i'll just leave it like this for now you know what i'm gonna put this no argument constructor all the way on the top and leave it like this for now okay so this is my uh the the model and now i will go in services and inside the services now what i really need is i need to use that repository which is extend the jpa repository so i need to use this to get all the data so now i need to create an instance for this and i can auto i need to do actually the auto wire or the dependency injection right so i don't have to initiate this all the time i could just use it uh, this class uh, this instance of it so now I need to again, I need to tell where it's coming from. It's coming from here, and I can use a dependency injection as well. So to use a dependency injection again, I will use all argument constructor. If I use all argument constructor, it's going to create me this one, or I can also create a constructor here, right, for talk service, and I can add like this the talks repository that does. But anyway, the Lambda will do a work. It will give me the dependent. It will add a dependency injection on this one, so I could literally use this one. So the first thing is to what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a public list class uh, Sorry method and it's going to return me a task and I will I will get the, all my tasks here Okay, the first thing So it will return me a task repository. I'll use this one here And now it will give me a bunch of the method which I want to use it. I will use a uh, Something called get all uh, let me check. Uh, I will use something called final. Yeah, final will give me the all my talks here. Okay, so I need to import, of course, the list from the util class and the talks from the model here. Okay, now this this is ready here. Okay, well, I will save this. This is ready. I can use this as a transactional. I don't need, but I will just use it as transactional. Uh, if I have multiple, uh, if uh, transaction that is calling then if any APIs fail then the transition will do a rollback on that one but uh, I'll just use a transactional here as a read only but true okay so so now once I use this so now I could create a controller for these services okay so now let me create another class uh, called the uh, talks controller okay and this will be inside the sam dot controllers okay so i'll just save this so this is my controller so on the controller i will specify that okay this is going to be my rest controller because the spring will give you a multiple controllers here okay uh not just controller or rest controller because i want to create an api so that's why i want to use a rest controller so now here i will do a request mapping and this is the request mapping it's, it will do every time at the first time so it will go inside the uh, url api and v1 and after that it's going to call my all the method on the bottom which i will define it later on so okay so another one i want as uh, i want to yeah cross origin as well this will helps you to tell that which is the front end uh, domain that i want to give access it so i'll just say that everything for now so of course i need this for later on for when i'm trying to connect with the apis right so now the first thing is i want a talk service uh, and the talk service i want instance of talk service uh, and i will use uh, of course the all argument constructor for dependency injection again and for that one now i will create a new method here called uh get talks okay so it will give me the talks list and this will be get talks and of course this will give i will get this from where from the talk service right so talk service dot it has something called get talks so i just want to make sure that this is working or not okay so i'll get this talk list from the util and the talks from the model and that's it i think now i need to specify what is this is the method is i need to specify this is a get mapping and get mapping we need to specify what is the uh, the url i'll just that talk so the domain should be domain api v1 slash talks now it will give me the all the talks so i'll just save this 
okay so i don't have any issues i have created the controller controller will call the services services will call my repository and repository will give me all the data so now last thing left is we need to tell our spring that we have this all has been defined and spring doesn't even know what, what is it so we need to tell that scan the component which will scan all the component stuff and services so we'll tell that okay scan that and we also need that we enable the jpa repository okay so it will we can we can we need to say where is it enable it so we say that we'll enable it inside this com that's the sam in the repository here inside it so once i save it now it's going to save it it's going to run it again dev tools will run it okay so something's wrong or not uh, we will know by quickly i think it's something's broken so let me run this nothing is broken now uh, let me check so if i go inside the talks yep nothing is broken it says that my it has an empty array it doesn't have anything because it's returning an empty box so if i go it here not here sorry where is it uh let me go uh, let me go to the my cables which is of course is here it doesn't have any data so now let me add a data directly on sql tables okay so on sql's here uh, i don't have to write a script i think i could literally uh, insert it easily okay i'll just insert it here quickly just in case right uh, easily doesn't even matter okay so just only one just go okay it's inserting this 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 okay just go okay i think i already inserted so now if i go browser i can see one data here is inserted if i refresh it here it is i see that data directly here in this one so it looks like my api first api is working so now my next step is to add the data using the api not with using this uh, sql but of course using the apis so this is uh, what it works at first time in next video i'm going to do a post request and then more about the spring api and thank you very much for watching guys for this video and i hope you guys learn, learn something new and if you guys like my video please do subscribe and like it thank you very much bye for now